square root of 25 is equal to 5. Everybody knows this. But sometimes this is wrong because 5 represents plus 5 only. And then what about minus 5? Square root of 25 can also be minus 5 because minus 5 squared is equal to minus 5 times minus 5, which is equal to 25 because minus times minus is plus. So there you have it. That is why whenever you take the square root of a number, the correct way of representing it is plus minus. So square root of 25 is plus or minus 5. Square root of 9. In my search for freedom. Alright, this is Sir Majesty Easy World Science Channel and today in mathematics we will be handling quadratic equation and how to solve it. This quadratic equation is one of the applied mathematics in our everyday life. You can use it to calculate speed and even in sports, the basketball players, they usually do the computations in their brain anytime they throw up ball to score. When they throw it into the net, they, are, they use the velocity quadratic equation to calculate the height and also know the time it will take to fall there. So this is everyday mathematics. So I. I'm here trying to tell you that what will be discussed today, it is not just on a textbook or for examination, it is applied in your everyday life. So it is very much usable. You see the method, the factorization method, the completing the square, then the quadratic formula, where some might call almighty formula. It will be clearly explained to you in this video. So happy watching, enjoy my stereo, the great mathematician as he takes you all the way. Don't forget to subscribe and share this video. Much love from me to you. Welcome to Sir Majesty Easy World Science channel. My name is Maestro and today we are going to be solving quadratic equations and their solution. So as you can see here, we'll start by defining what a quadratic equation is and then the general form of a quadratic equation before we move into the different methods of solving quadratic equation, which includes factorization, completing the square and quadratic formula. So we'll start with the definition. What is a quadratic equation? What is an equation in the first place? So here is an example. So if I write something like 3x plus 2 is equal to, um, say, 20, we can solve this equation by finding the value of x which makes the equation true. So this is a kind of equation known as a linear equation. And if I write something like 3x squared plus 5x minus 6 equals to 0, this one right here will be considered a quadratic equation. And the reason for this is the square here. So in simple terms, a quadratic equation is an equation whereby the highest power of x is 2. So any equation where the highest power of x is 2, even say x squared minus 5 is equals to 0, is a quadratic equation equation and if we remove the square here it turns to a linear equation so that is what a quadratic equation is and then we look at the general form of a quadratic equation usually in mathematics quadratic equations are given in the form okay like this one we have 3x squared plus 5x minus 6 equals to 0 or something like x squared plus 3x plus 1 equals to 0. Usually quadratic equations in mathematics. If we notice, we can see some similarities between these two quadratic equations. For example, they have a term in x squared and another term in x and then another term which is a constant, that is a, a number, an integer. And most of the time they are equated to 0. So the general form of a quadratic equation can be given as ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. And you can see that we can compare this form to each of these equations here. So a stands for the coefficient of the x squared term and b stands for the coefficient of the term in x. And then c is our constant, our number. So if we compare this to this first equation here, we can see that our a is 3. Our b here is 5 for this, for this first equation. The b here is 5. And then our c is the value minus 6. If we compare it to the second equation, we can see that our a for this, the coefficient of x squared here is 1. Every mathematics student should know this. And then here we can see that b, which is the coefficient of our x term, is 3. And our constant term is 1. 
So this is the generally accepted form of a quadratic equation. Now we move on to solving quadratic equations. So the simplest method or the most popular method of solving quadratic equations is known as the factorization method. Okay, so in factorization method, we are given an equation, for example, um, we have something like um, x squared plus 7x plus 10 is equal to 0. So we are asked to solve the equation x squared plus 7x plus 10 is equal to 0. And if you recall, solving this equation means finding the value of x such that when we put that value here and here, this expression here becomes 0. <clears throat> so how do we solve this? In factorization, we have to find two numbers. We are looking for two numbers such that we, we consider this um, coefficient of x, which is 7, this number here and this one. So we start by looking for two numbers such that their, their sum is 7 and their product is 10. So we are looking for two numbers, two unknowns, such that when you add these two numbers, you get 7. And when you multiply these two numbers, you get 10. And then we begin to brainstorm. What numbers can you multiply to get 10? 2 times 5 should give us 10, and 2 plus 7 should, 2 plus 5 should give us 7. So 2 and 5 are the numbers we are looking for, because those are the only pair of numbers that satisfy this condition. So we have 2 and 5. Now what we do with these numbers is very important. So the next step of fact the factorization process is to split this 7x into 2 and 5. Since we know that 7 is equal to 2 plus 5, it also means that 7x is going to be 2x plus 5x. So we will write the equation x squared plus, instead of writing 7x, we now replace it with 2x plus 5x plus 10 equals to 0. So this equation here and this one is the same thing. The only thing we change here is the 2x plus 5x which we use to replace 7x. So now we do the factorization. We, we group these two together and factorize them and group these two together to factorize them. So now we have x squared plus 2x. What does x squared and 2x have in common? It is x. So we bring out x, open bracket, x plus 2. And you can see that when you open this bracket you get x squared plus 2x because x times x gives you x squared and x times 2 gives you 2x. Now moving on to this one, we have what does 5x and 10 have in common? That is 5. So we have 5x plus 2 equals to 0. So now you can see that we have x plus 2 on this side and x plus 2 on this side. So we have to factorize again. So we bring out x plus 2 in bracket. What is left here? x plus what is here? 5. So we get x plus 2 times x plus 5 is equals to 0. Now we have succeeded in factorizing this equation, but we have not solved the equation yet. So as you can see now, we have reduced this expression, x squared plus 7x plus 10 is equals to 0, to become x plus 2 multiplied by x plus 5 to give 0. Now to finish up this, um, to finish up the solving, we now have to understand something in mathematics that when two numbers or when two values multiply each other to get to give zero, it can only mean that either one of the numbers or values is equal to zero or both of them are equal to zero. So if, if for example I have A times B is equal to zero, then it is either A is equal to zero or B is equal to 0, or A and B are equal to 0. So that is the condition for 0, when two or more numbers are being 
multiplied together. So using this, we can now say that it is either x plus 2, because as you can see here, we are multiplying x plus 2 by x plus 5 to get 0. So we can conclude that either x plus 2 is equal to 0, or x plus 5 is equal to 0. And then what does that give us? That means that our equation, we are going to have if x plus 2 is equal to 0, what is the value of x? We can simply get this by moving the 2 to the other side so that we have x is equal to minus 2. And then here, if x plus 5 is equal to 0, we do the same thing. We move the 5 to the other side to get x is equal to minus 5. And these two values can be said to be the, uh, the roots of the given equation, x squared plus 7x plus 10. And that is how we use factorization method. Now when you practice this, eventually you get very good at it, you get better at it, and you get faster. And you won't have to take so much time in doing it. So we are going to do another example. Okay, so we are looking for two numbers such that their sum is minus 5 and their product is minus 6. So I think 1 and 5, uh, sorry, 6 and 1 should be a correct distance because 6 plus minus 1, that is 6 plus minus 1, should give us minus 5 because 6 plus minus 1 is the same thing as 6 minus 1. <coughs> and now 6 multiplied by minus 1 should also give us minus 6. So I think those are the correct um, values for this particular one. So we are going to use this 6 and minus 1 to solve, to um, split this minus 5 one. So what we do next here, very important, we have 2y square, and instead of repeating this minus 5 y, we break it down into 6y minus 1. So we write plus 6y minus 1 minus 3 is equal to 0. Now we can get rid of this one and complete the uh, so, so here we have 2y square plus 6y minus y minus 3 is equals to 0. We are going to pair this 2 and this. So here we have 2 and y in common. Factors of 2y square and 6y. 2 can go and y can also go. So we have 2y open bracket y plus 3. And then here, as you can see, it is minus y minus 3. So what they have in common here is minus 1. So we put out minus 1 bracket y plus 3 equals to 0. So now we have y plus 3 here and y plus 3 here. So we simply take 1, that is we factorize y plus 3 bracket 2y minus 1 is equals to 0. Now we use the we use our knowledge on mathematics to finish this up. If two numbers multiply to get 0, it means that either y plus 3 is equal to 0 or 2y minus 1 is equal to 0. So if y plus 3 is equal to 0, that simply implies that y is equal to minus 3. And if 2y minus 1 is equal to 0, that simply implies that 2y is equal to 1. By moving this one to the other side, it becomes positive 1, and then we divide both sides by 2, so that we get y is equal to half. So this is y2, and this is y1. So, as you can see, whenever you solve a quadratic equation, you usually end up with two values, because a quadratic equation usually has two values. Not all quadratic equations have two values, though, but most of them have two values. So that's all you need to know about factorization. Now we are going to move into completing the square method. Okay, so in this example here, we are asked to find what must be added to this expression to make it a perfect square. So without wasting time, we convert this uh, mixed fraction here into an improper fraction, which is 5 times 1 plus 3, that is 8 over 5. U. So this is the expression we have, and we want to find the term that makes this expression a perfect square. So we can do this by using the formula for our k. So k is equals to b all over 2 all square. So our b in this case is minus 8 over 
5. B is equal to minus 8 over 5 because B is the coefficient of U. So K is equal to B all over 2 all square, which is equal to minus 8 over 5 divided by 2 close bracket square, which is the same thing as minus 8 over 5 multiplied by 1 over 2 because we have division. So if you know your fractions very well, you know that when you have division, you can change it to multiplication and take the reciprocal of the number here. All square. So 2 here, 1, 2 here, 4. So finally we have minus 4 over 5 all square. So that when we square this, we have 4 squared. The square of 4 is what? 16. And the square of 5 is 25. Of course, the negative sign disappears because the square of a negative number is a positive number. So the value that must be added here to make it a perfect square is 16 over 25. So u squared minus u squared u squared minus 8 over 5 u plus 16 over 25 is an expression which can be said to be a perfect square because this can now be factorized into u plus 4 over 5 all squared. And when you expand this bracket, you get this expression here. u squared minus 8 over 5 u plus 16 over 25. Now, we move into the real deal. That is how to use what you've just learned to solve actual quadratic equations. So I'm going to write down two examples here, and we're going to solve them using completing the square method. So the first example... So in the first example, we have x squared minus 4x minus 2 is equals to 0. Usually, whenever you're given a quadratic equation to solve, it is typical for most people to attempt to solve it by using factorization method. So whenever factorization method fails, you can now use any other method, either completing the square or the quadratic formula. So first of all, we try to factorize. Um, so we are looking for two numbers such that their product is minus 2 and their sum is minus 4. So we are looking for two numbers such that their product is minus 2 and their sum is minus 4. Um, I don't think any two numbers exist such that they produce minus 2 by multiplication and minus 4 by addition. If you know any such numbers, please leave the answer in the comment. So that means factorization cannot work for this particular example, which means what we have to use now is completing the square method. So this is how we do it. We start by moving this constant term to the other side so that we can focus on this algebraic expression. So we have x squared minus 4x is equal to minus 2 moves over here and becomes plus 2 or just 2. Now, the next step, we ask ourselves, what must be added to x squared minus 4x to make it a perfect square? And then you use the techniques you've learned just before to solve this part. So let me do it on the side of the board so it doesn't waste our time. So we have x squared minus 4x plus some number k to make it a perfect square. And now we know that k is equals to minus, sorry, k is equals to b all over 2 all squared. And what is the value of our b? The value of our b is the coefficient of the linear term here, which is minus 4. So our b is equal to minus 4 for this case. So now we substitute the value of minus 4 for b. So k is equal to minus 4 divided by 2 all squared. Minus 4 divided by 2 gives us minus 2. All squared gives us 4. Remember, when you square a negative number, your answer becomes positive. Every mathematics student should know this by SS3. So, your answer is 4. So, 4 is the number that must be added here to make it a perfect square. Now, add 4 to both sides. We say x squared minus 4x plus 4. Now, since you have added 4 to the left-hand side of the equation, you can't leave this one like that. You must also do the same. You must also add 4 to the other side of the equation. So now you factorize this expression here, this particular one. You factorize this expression to get what? 
when we factorize this, we are going to have x plus, sorry, x minus 2 all squared is equal to 2 plus 4, 6. Now, if we are to make sure that this factorization is not wrong, you can do that by expanding this bracket to check if the value, if the expression you get is the same thing as x squared minus 4x plus 4. So let us do this quickly. x minus 2 squared is the same thing as x minus 2 multiplied by x minus 2. x times x gives us x squared. x times minus 2 gives us minus 2x. Minus 2 times x gives us minus 2x. And minus 2 times minus 2 gives us plus 4. So we collect like terms, minus 2x minus 2x is minus 4x plus 4. So yes, the factorization is correct. Now that we have succeeded in factorizing this equation, the, that is the left hand side, we can simply take the square root of both sides because we have a square here. So to remove the square, we take the square root of both sides. So we take the square root of this side and the square root of this side. And then this cancels this. Now I'm going to add plus minus here because the reason for this is because whenever you take the square root of a number the answer can be both either negative or positive here is what i mean square root of 25 is equal to 5. everybody knows this but sometimes this is wrong because 5 represents plus 5 only and then what about minus 5 Square root of 25 can also be minus 5 because minus 5 squared is equal to minus 5 times minus 5, which is equal to 25 because minus times minus is plus. So there you have it. That is why whenever you take the square root of a number, the correct way of representing it is plus minus. So square root of 25 is plus or minus 5. Square root of 9 is plus or minus 3. Hi, my name is Cheryl and I'm Jennifer. Guess, Guess what? what? There's a channel called Sound Majesty Easy World Science. And channel. you know the best part? Mm -hmm. It makes science so easy. Wow. It makes science easy, simplified, and very, very fun. Guess what? Rocky Science isn't Rocky Science anymore. It's now ABC. Like if you did science in your entire life. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing about Sound Majesty Easy World Science channel is that he makes available laboratory equipment and reagents Guess the best part, if chemistry has been hard for you, he does tutorials And another thing is, when you order for these things, they are high quality and they are also cheap and affordable for anybody If you want to order, just look at the number below the screen And don't forget to subscribe and hit the little notification button down below Don't forget to share, of course, obviously there's love in sharing Thank, Thank you. you! We'll see you there! <laughs> Okay, so we now have x minus 2 is equal to plus minus square root of 6. So, to find the value of our x, we move, the two, we move this 2 to the other side so that finally x is equal to 2 plus minus square root of 6. And this is our final answer. Now, moving on to the second example. Okay, so in the second example, we have x squared minus 10x plus 15 is equal to 0. And like I said before, whenever you're given a quadratic uh, equation to solve, you attempt to use the factorization method because it's the quickest way to solve. So if we attempt to factorize this, that means we'll be looking for two numbers such that their product is 15 and their sum is minus 10. And I don't think any two such numbers exist. Therefore, we are going to use completing the square method to solve this one. So we start by moving the constant term to the other side so that we can focus on this term here. So we have x squared minus 10x is equal to minus 15 because we moved it to this side. Then we focus here. What must be added to x squared minus 10x to make it a perfect square? So this is where the whole completing the square method is. This is once you learn this part, you're done you're okay, you're good with completing the square. If you can find the term which completes the square, then you don't have any problem. So here we have x squared plus x squared minus 10x plus some number k to make it a perfect square. And we know that k is equals to b all over 2 all squared. And our b is given as what? Minus 10. 
so that k is equals to minus 10 all over 2 squared, which is equals to minus 5 squared, which is 25. So we have x squared minus 10x plus 25 is equals to minus 15 plus 25. We are doing justice by adding 25 to both sides since this is an equation. Now we factorize this part to get x minus 5 all squared is equals to minus 15 plus 25 should give us 10. Now, we have a square, a square here, so to remove the square, we take the square root of both sides. So when we take the square root of this side, the square and the square root cancel, so that we have only x minus 5. And we take the square root of this side to have plus or minus 10. Now, this, as you can see, we have already finished solving. We simply move this 5 to the other side to get our final answer. So x is equals to 5 plus or minus square root of 10. And that is the value of our x. So in other words, the first one, as I told you, a quadratic equation usually has two answers. So therefore, the first answer is going to be 5. We consider the positive part of this. So 5 plus square root of 10. And then the second solution is 5 minus square root of 10. And these are the two answers we have for this quadratic equation. So now, something that they don't tell you sometimes, uh, completing the square method can only be used in equations whereby the coefficient of your x, your x squared, or the coefficient of the square term is 1. So if you look at our example 1 and example 2, you see that the coefficient here is 1, the coefficient here is 1. So how do you use completing the square method in, in a case whereby the coefficient of the, x, the square term is not 1? How do we solve this? So that's what we're going to look at in our next example. Example 3 says, using completing the square method, solve minus 2x squared plus 3x minus 4 equal to 0. As earlier said in this video by Maestro, that when the coefficient of the squared term is not 1, therefore you cannot use completing the square method to solve such quadratic equation. So for you to solve this equation using the completing the square, you must reduce the coefficient of the squared term to 1. What must you do? You will divide the whole part of the quadratic equation with the coefficient of the squared term. Here it is minus 2. So I'll divide all the parts of this equation with minus 2. If the coefficient of the square term is 3, I'll divide the whole part by 3. But here it is minus 2. Therefore, I'll divide minus 2x squared by minus 2. Also divide plus 3x by minus 2 and also divide minus 4 by minus 2. Divide 0 by minus 2, which is automatically 0. Therefore, you know that when positive, uh, when negative divide negative, it will give you positive. You now have that minus 2x squared divided by minus 2 will give you x squared. And we have reduced the coefficient of the squared term to 1. And we can now solve this equation using completing the square method. You have to be careful here that when plus is divided by minus, it's going to give you minus. When minus divide minus, it's going to give you plus. Therefore, at the end, we have that x squared minus 3 over 2x is equal to minus 2. And in completing the square method, you have to introduce k, which is gotten by b over 2 all squared. The b in our newly rearranged equation is minus 3 over 2. Therefore, k is now equal to minus 3 over 2 over 2 all squared. And now, take it this way. If you square a negative number, it will automatically give you a positive number. We take it this way. Minus 3 square is 9. Then 2 square is also 4. And then 2 square again is also 4. We have that the whole thing will now sum up as 9 over 4 over 4. In mathematics, if you have A over B over C, where B and C are divisible with our remainder, it implies that it will now be A over B times 1 over C. Applying it here, we have that 9 over 4 over 4. 4 is divisible by 4. It will now be 9 over 4 times 1 over 4. 9 times 1 is 9. And 4 times 4 is 16. Our K is now 9 over 16. You go back to the quadratic equation and introduce your K. Keep on enjoying with Maestro your man of mathematics okay so <clears throat> we have minus 3 over 2 divided by 2 all squared so we focus on the term inside the bracket we want to simplify it first so we change this division to multiplication and take the reciprocal of 2 which is 1 over 2 all squared so this gives us minus 3 times 1 minus 3 
2 times 2, 4. All square. So this gives us a minus 3 square is 9, all over 4 square is 16. So the value that must be added to this to make it a perfect square is 9 over 16. So this becomes x squared minus 3 over 2x plus 9 over 16 is equals to minus 2 plus 9 over 16. Okay. So now we have to factorize this side, which is going to give us x minus 4, sorry, minus 3 over 4, all square is equal to, so here we have to compute, 9 over 16 minus 2 is going to give us what? We have 9 over 16, we subtract 2 over 1, I mean, of course the LCM is 16, so here we have 9, 16 times 2, 32. So 9 minus 32 is going to give us um, 20, 23 over 16. Minus 23, minus 23 over 16. Okay, so here we have minus 23 over 16. Now we take the square root of both sides to eliminate the square here. So when we take the square root of this, it, it neutralizes the square here. So we have x minus 3 over 4 is equal to, we take the square root of this side, we have square root of minus 23 over 16. And then finally we can move this term to this side to finish our solving. So we have x is equal to square root of minus 23 all over square root of 16 when this changes sign it changes signs too so it becomes plus 3 over 4 of course we have to put plus or minus here we have to also put plus or minus here so this gives us what square root of 16 is 4 so we have that x is equals to plus or minus square root of 20 minus 23 minus 23 all over 4 which is the square root of 16 plus 3 all over 4 which is this term here so since they have the same denominator we can add these two together so that finally our answer can be written as 4 here all over 3 plus or minus square root of minus 23 and this is the final answer for this particular equation. Now, if you notice, if you take your calculator and try to calculate the, uh, the square root of minus 23, it's going to give you error. The reason for this is because um, you cannot calculate the square root of a negative number. It's another branch of mathematics. This is an imaginary root, so it is beyond the scope of what we are learning here. It's just something you should know. So this is the correct answer to this um, equation here. And that is all you need to know concerning completing the square method. Now we are going to move on to the quadratic, um, to the quadratic formula, which some of you call the almighty formula. But the correct name is quadratic formula, of course. So I'm going to show you how to use the quadratic formula to solve quadratic equations. Okay, so the, the last method we're going to see here is the quadratic formula, using the quadratic formula. What I've just written on the board, the one in, uh, in a rectangle, is known as the quadratic formula. This is the formula that can solve any quadratic equation, whether its roots are real or imaginary. So if you don't know how to do factorization, you don't know how to do completing the square, but you can use the formula, then you'll be able to solve any quadratic equation. The only problem is that an examiner, uh, the examination or the question might require you to use a particular method to solve the quadratic equation. But just know that this method will be able to solve any and all quadratic equation. So the formula is given as x is equals to minus b, where b is the coefficient of the x term. 
then plus minus square root of b square minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. So this is the quadratic formula. The proof for this formula is not very important because unless you are a mathematics student, you don't you, you, you really need to know it. But it, of course it's good if you understand where this formula comes from. However, I don't think any examination body will ever demand the proof of this formula from you. So let's see how we can use this formula to solve a few questions. Okay, so in example one, we have x squared minus 4x minus 5 is equal to 0. So to solve this using the quadratic formula, we simply need to identify our a, b, and c. So the a is the coefficient of the x squared term, which is 1 in this case. The b is the coefficient of the x term, which is minus 4 in this case. Please, it is also, it is very important to pay attention to signs because if you erroneously write B as 4 instead of minus 4, this formula, you're going to get the wrong answer when you apply this formula correctly. So now, our C is negative 5. Now, now that we have identified our A, B, and C, we can now proceed to use the quadratic formula to solve. So we have X is equals to minus b that is minus bracket minus 4 so this first minus comes from the formula itself and the second uh, negative comes from the value of our b then plus minus square root of b square our b is minus 4 so we have minus 4 square minus 4 times a times c 4 multiplied by our a which is 1 multiplied by our c which is minus minus 5, sorry, so I have to extend this to include all of this, all over 2a, which is 2 times 1. Now we simplify, minus minus 4 is going to give us plus 4, plus minus, square root of, square root, uh, the square of minus 4 is 16. Minus 4 times 1, minus 4. Minus 4 times minus 5, plus 20. All over 2 times 1 is 2. So this is going to give us 4 plus minus. Uh, 16 plus 20 is going to give us 36. So here we are going to have square root of 36 all over 2. Now... Usually, when you solve an equation, you get two answers. So the first value, we are, for the first value, we are going to consider the positive part. So we are going to say x1 is equal to 4 plus square root of 36 is 6 all over 2. 4 plus 6 is 10. 10 divided by 2 is going to give us 5. And then, for the second part, uh, for our second value of x, we are going to consider the negative part. So this gives us 4 minus square root of 36, 6, all over 2. 4 minus 6 gives us minus 2, divided by 2, we get minus 1. So the solution to this equation is 5 and minus 1 are the answers for this particular one. So this is how you use the formula. We are going to do another example. So for this example, we have our A is equal to 5. Our b is equal to minus 3, and our c is equal to minus 2. So using the formula, we know that x is equal to minus b, which is minus minus 3, plus minus square root of b square, which is minus 3 square, 
minus 4 times a. a is 5, so times 5 times c. c is minus 2 times minus 2 all over 2a. That is 2 times 5. Now we simplify. x is equal to minus minus, as minus times minus is plus. So square root of minus 3 squared is 9. Minus 4 times 5 is, will give us minus 20. Minus 20 times minus 2 will give us minus, sorry, plus 40. Because negative times negative is positive. All of that, 2 times 5 gives us 10. So now we have x is equal to 3 plus minus 9 plus 40 is 49. So we have 3 plus minus square root of 49 is 7 all over 10. So for the first value of our x, we, get, we consider the positive part. So we get 3 plus 7 all over 10, which is equal to 10 over 10, which is equal to 1. And for our second value, we get 3 minus 7 all over 10, which is equal to uh, minus 4 over 10 which is equal to minus 2 over 5. And these are the different values for x. So that's all you need to know about the formula method, which is the most, um, the, which is the surest way to solve a quadratic equation if you can't do factorization or completing the square, or if you are asked to use quadratic formula. So thank you. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.